Hey guys, it's uh, Pokegal here. I thought I want to do a quick uh, b- podcast. And if things work out, I really like to do something like this uh, where I just bring in the guests and we do life uh, just regular just talk and get to know things and just communicate with each other. So I invited uh, Bubba Squad, so San and Sarah back. So I'm pretty excited. Um, I wanted to talk about the recent purchase. Uh, so let's get this going. You know what? Even though they came on the live stream, they did introduce themselves. Why don't you guys just reintroduce, reintroduce yourself real quick for us again? All right. So uh, we're Bulba Squad. Um, most of the time, I'm the on-screen personality and Sarah's the behind-the-scenes tech. And okay. uh, mostly we cover just finance things, a little bit of collectibles. We're starting or collecting we're starting to move more into that because i'm having sarah pop up on camera more we were trying to play uh pokemon snap too but that has not been moving forward really yeah it's just uh, we keep getting sidetracked and we're we're thinking about streaming that soon but other than that we're primarily just investing with a little bit of collecting mixed in gotcha i i think you guys lean towards if correct me if i'm wrong i think you guys lean towards more of collecting now Right. I don't um, think you guys or from from what I'm thinking, tell me, I mean, I'm, correct me, I'm wrong, more of collecting. OK, I would probably say 80 percent collecting, 20 percent investing or am I right on that or no? It's kind of half and half. Essentially, okay. we collect most of what we want to invest. We also want to collect at the same time, like uh, the mm-hmm. big purchase you saw about all the generations. That's why yeah. we want to collect it because we really like mm-hmm. it. But we also see mm-hmm. it as a potential investment vehicle. So, and that's how most of our items come up. Okay. Congratulations about that. I saw that video, so I'm pretty excited. So, tell me a little bit. Where did you find this exactly? Um, you did say it was a three thousand dollar purchase. Where did you find this seller, and what made you even, I think, collect and invest in generations? So, uh, it. it the value of it um, is around 3000 It's all the different pieces I purchased. The first thing I showed off, it was from Collecticon, the uh, event that Real Breaking It and Gary held. I just happened to get to go there at the last second, so that was great. As for the two generations purchases I made, um, they were both completely separate, actually. I, I actually made a mistake. I thought, I have a history of, all right, I put out a bunch of deals out there. Nine, nine out of the 10 get shot down and one goes through. So I thought, you know what? I'll just put out two offers out there. Both got accepted. So I ended up with a very large position in generations. Um, one of them was a Craigslist offer, which I, I was certain I wasn't going to get because he said, oh, I already have a buyer lined up. But if it falls through, I'll sell it to you. Nine, mm-hmm. Most of the times it goes through. Didn't yeah. Go through. So I drove all the way to Austin to pick the collection up. It was a, it was a four hour drive. Yeah, I, I heard. Yeah, we picked it up. Uh, by my evaluation, it's about a thousand dollars, a thousand twelve hundred dollars, give or take, to pick that collection up. Mm-hmm. Especially if I pick it all up separately, and we paid six hundred for that one. Mm-hmm. As wow. for generations ETB and the uh, premium collection, mm-hmm. I ended up paying twelve hundred for that one. I managed to negotiate them down because there's a little tear in the back of the premium collection. I saw. Uh huh. Yeah, so I. So I basically told him, hey, it's damaged, so I can't keep it sealed. Um, I'm going to end up having to crack it one day, so it's going to hurt the value. I'm willing to negotiate down to this price. And he eventually gave in because I've realized a lot of people, once you're talking over $1,000, are willing to leave a couple hundred on the table. That's really nice. How was the drive, Sarah? I assume you were with him in the drive. How was oh, the drive? Was driving, actually, because... Uh... I do most of the driving. I'm pretty much his personal chaperone, so. <laughs> and so she's the better driver of the two of us. Yes. As for hey, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Wow, that is cool. When I lived in um, San Diego, when I went to law school in San Diego, in three months, mu- in three months, I got into three car accident, three speeding ticket. I I don't even know. I I've. I probably did not drive for three years when I was in law school. There was terrible. So 
I, I'm a terrible driver. <laughs> How ironically, it falls into the Asian stereotype. In this case, it's definitely true here. So it's so <laughs> true. It's so darn true. Uh, my insurance is off the roof, uh, off the roof. But this is, I was a terrible. I'm a, such a terrible driver. That's good to know. So what are your? What is the plan to do with generations? Are you just going to? I, I assume you're not going to open it, right? I assume. No. Good. Yeah, I don't like getting plans. I assume. I assumed. Um, so <laughs> you know, it's funny because I talked to uh, Jessica, who mentioned Gary, and I had I booked Gary, so I was really really excited, and I made an emphasis, and I think um, we're gonna do this soon. We made an emphasis that we're gonna have female collectors, and I want to invite just Sarah. Sorry, sad. <laughs> just female collectors, so it's gonna be me, Jessica. I want to invite Sarah, and uh, I'm probably hoping to reach out to uh, Super Danny and just female collectors in, in Pokemon, and we just have a panel of it. So that's something that we want to do. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I'm going to work with Jessica, which is geeked out uh, collecting, and she's going to be on the live streams. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, San, can you still hear me? Yes. Uh, sorry. It's uh, currently my Discord is up and it's making sound, and I'm pretty sure your camera's gonna pick it up. So I'm logging out. Oh, that was it. Okay, I thought it was mine. Gotcha. No, no, the oh, God, gotcha. I thought computer. it was mine because I was so used to. Yeah, I just I'm so used to just not listening to Discord. I just blanked out and I just I mute that darn thing. I I don't like Discord for some weird reason. People always reach out to me. And for and someone told me there was like four pokey gals on there. I'm like it all could be me because I have no idea if if I changed my name I wouldn't I wouldn't even know. So but anyways back to generations. Um so you're not going to open it. What's your long-term goal or even short-term goal with all of that because I do think that's such a great picked up. I really really do. So uh, I mostly try to see long term. Uh, and initially, the whole idea of this investing was I wanted to invest and put it away until I got out of med school. The plans have changed a little bit since then. Um, now it's just investing. The main thing I'm looking for is I hit the magical 100% rate of return eventually. And then I'll consider selling it off because at that point I get, I think, in the end, about an 80 I had a 75, 70% return, depending on how big the item is. Um, when it came to generations, one thing I've learned, I used to think eBay isn't a good representative for what's out there in the market, but that's very wrong. It's actually a really good representative because for everyone who's holding the product, there's going to be a certain portion, percentage, however you want to put it, that's going to be willing to sell at each price point. So let's say theoretically with evolutions, there were thousands of boxes before the big spike and now we're down to a couple hundred online and a lot of people have actually been hiding it away now expecting it to go up so that told me the the supply of it went down a lot of it got opened and when i saw generations at the beginning of this boom when i checked it out back in uh i think i checked it out in may there was probably 300 elite trainer boxes for sale and those premium collections, I believe there was around 150. Right now, for the Elite Trainer boxes, there's about 50, 40 hits. And premium collections, we're down to like 23. So that told me either these have been getting opened or these are ending up in long-term collections slash investments. So these are going to be gone mm -hmm. off the market for a while. Even if the price appreciates a little bit or a fair bit, I don't think that many are going to flood the market. And I think the rarity has definitely, I think the rarity came because of a lot of people's actions. So yeah. generations, there was a lot more supply right out the gate, but it never received the constant reprints that evolutions and the massive supply that shining legends had for a long time. Yeah. Th people, that's, that's true. Yeah. People were cracking it for fun. People were, uh, some, some people were trying to store it away, and then whenever it went stagnant, uh, I did some digging. I learned that TCA Gaming apparently at one point was trying to dump his position and get rid of it. 
So I expect yeah. there will be a lot of people who are doing the exact same thing. It's dead money, opportunity cost is too high. We'll dump it. And at those prices, people are probably cracking it. Um, and maybe even doing what Rudy from Alpha Investments did, where generations, just the loose packs, he has them in boxes. He didn't keep Oh, yeah. I have tons them. here. Tons. I I think I'm sitting on like 500 in the back of me. I have a <laughs> lot of it. Um, I do remember when Generations came out, I was I was a fool. And um, don't get me wrong. You know, it's funny because I was telling the others, like, you can be in collecting for such a long time and still fall into the hype. I certainly did. I did. I paid $27 for a pack of Generations. And within like two weeks, reprint, nine dollars and i'm like are we kidding me and so how i hoarded all these packs was well except these these i went to target uh, at first people were in line at gamestop and people were in line at target and all that crazy stuff to get generations were so hyped and when it just completely died down oh it died down fast and how i got all of these packs and uh it was because a local uh, card game and sorry a local card shop closed down near me sadly and the guy it was selling for two dollars a pack and the guy said i can't sell them at all at all you want to buy them all for two dollars and i said okay and i i kept them till now till now it's all sitting in the back i've crazy ton of amount so um i do have that box that you're talking as well it's all in the corner here so i've I'm pretty excited. I do think generation is going to go up, especially when the 25, the 25th anniversary is coming up. I do. And I hear a lot of talks about generation, just people opening it for fun. Um, the cards went up significantly too, if I, if I recall. So. Yeah. There's actually a Charizard in that set. That's been, it's not a big chase card, but it's been slowly appreciating. And the Pokey Kayun cards, I feel those are just going to keep going up because people, most people know about the Pokey Kayun. I think it's CP5 booster box. It's $1,000. Generations mm -hmm. is the same thing. Uh, it has those exact same cards, and I think it might have a few more. I'm not 100% certain. I need to double check that. Yeah. And Pokey Kayun is a very unique set, and those are mm -hmm. very unique cards. They're like uh, there have been no other like really cutesy cards. So um, Sarah, what are some of the ones you can remember? You're the one who remembered these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Radiant yeah. Collection. Oh, they've got the they've got the the Vaporeon, Flareon, Jolteon like all smushed together on the screen, like going out of the borders. And they've got a Sylveon. And a, I think it's something else. Oh yeah, the Pikachu that are all smushed up against the screen and trying to come out. Like that's a very that's all what Pokemon is. At the end of the day, we're all art collectors, and that is a very unique art gallery, even more so than I would argue the alternate arts. I think the Pokey Kayun cards have been a little underappreciated, and as time has been passing on, and these cards, honestly, I don't see that many in the population. I don't see hundreds upon hundreds of these, when in reality, I feel as though these should be treated with more respect. Yeah, I can find Pokey Kayun cards, or I guess the radiant collection cards from uh the local card store we go to they have them in their box of bulk so i'll like sometimes sit through and try to find them and buy them for like five cents oh yeah my local card shop has tons of that for like five cents or 25 cents speaking of which i should go back because he only sells it to certain people and he said um that he's gonna go sell he's gonna bring more boxes for me i just haven't had time to just I haven't had time to do. I just haven't had time to um, basically go there. I've just been so, so busy. So I'm pretty hyped up. I'm pretty excited. So I talked to Gary and I'm um, not talked to Gary, but Jessica talked to Gary who told me, uh, she told me a story about her opening some sealed Fortnite boxes. Did you know Fortnite is even crazily investable and collectible at the same time i did not know that fortnite cards which made me do a little bit digging and she's absolutely correct i'm i'm probably even interested in some fortnite now after i heard that she apparently bought some boxes back then for twenty dollars and there were they were selling as she sold now for twenty four hundred dollars and she had like twenty of those boxes 
Fortnite. <laughs> huh. I thought that was yeah. Gaga now. Yeah. And um, she told me that she talked to Gary and she shared that story. And Gary said, when you open a box, you have to have a definite purpose to open that box. And I, that, I was funny because that's exactly why I hoard all these things. Because when I open them, the value goes significantly down. There's no definite purpose purpose of it instead of just hey i'd rather go buy the card and i really like that you did that video based on how to invest and how to collect i really really like that and especially when you mentioned the champion's path charizard where you said the chance of you pulling that it's probably not in your favor whatsoever what's at all and i really like that i've i've, I've learned that just to just go out and buy the singles so but how are you finding like new collectors and new people to to even trade because you said uh to buy and there's some to trade like how are you finding is it facebook is it discord so the first one i found on um for the rainbow Royal charizard he actually reached out to me um he didn't have the money on he, ebay right uh yeah on ebay he reached out to me and so i took mm -hmm. down the listing we went to instagram talked and he showed me a bunch of people mm -hmm. who were verified and mm -hmm. in the end I decided all right I'll, I'll take the gamble it was a gamble because at the end of the day you can always get scammed in this hobby unfortunately oh, we traded true. we traded and it went good and I realized okay now I have a connection into the trading world and mm -hmm. he has a bunch of people he already trades with he already mm -hmm. had all these connections like all right and now we have a I think his name was Pokizar 2000 then he sent me to PT mm -hmm. collectibles and all these people mm -hmm. And all you have to do is find one person or even a Facebook group of collectors. And usually they'll blacklist those who tried to scam or once oh, you yeah. get verified, they will oh, essentially yeah. bring you in and you'll be able to collect. And in some cases, um, they even use middlemen from what I've learned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been a middleman before. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. So, but yeah, absolutely. But yes, I just think that just right now, I do think the hype, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I'm starting to see the hype die down just a tad bit. Just a tad. Just a tad. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I'm starting to see that. It's funny because for battle styles, I saw someone... Um, not name of that person or what group but was trying to sell it for 17 dollar a pack and crazy and f i thought it was funny because not a lot of people were buying it i'm like well thank goodness i think they're starting to see and i made this bold statement i want you guys to um let's talk about this because the chat went nuts when i said the statement i made this bold statement and I said the new collectors that are coming in that are agreeing to pay $17 or $15 a pack, whatever it was, they're just hurting themselves. They're not biting themselves in the feet, you know, the foot. They're shooting themselves really fast because they are agreeing to like, you know what? Charge me. Charge me those prices. I agree to them. And in the end, who's the person who's the who hurts the most? themselves because they are agreeing every set charge higher and higher and higher and not only that they're gonna get so burnt out they are setting president to say charge me for this so those new collectors who are un i'm sorry misguided on things and just don't have the patient they're just hurting nobody else but themselves and i made that comment and i think i made it during um jessica geeked out and i think the comment went crazy um i just want to know your thoughts on that uh one second oh sorry you can go after me in a second uh so yeah definitely people are 100 percent hurting themselves paying these prices mm -hmm. but i mm -hmm. do understand where it's coming from it's um i had the discussion earlier today there's a pikachu uh, parade little sculpture that's on pokemon on the Pokemon Center, you should check it out. It's gorgeous, uh, and they're they're gonna make a set. So back on topic, I was talking mm -hmm. to Sarah about it and going, "I want this. 
I need to buy mm -hmm. it now because otherwise I'm not going to get the chance to buy it later. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there's been a Charizard sculpture had 2,500 copies and that like tripled in price. I saw it. that. Uh, I saw that Charizard. It's nice. It's the Master Ball nice. too. I and, did. I saw all of it. And I so I get where it is. It's essentially a case of if I don't buy it now, I'm not going to get it later or I'm going to have to pay more. And I mm -hmm. understand that. But there's such, there's such risk in that. We don't know if the prices are going to maintain, if they're going to drop below what they are now. And the biggest piece of advice everyone keeps getting, giving right now, and even especially the biggest of the collectors, is buy what you love and don't try to time the market. That's what they keep telling them. So they're like, if it's a $500, just pay. Like, you want it. You want to collect it. But I think that's, in the current environment, that's a terrible piece of advice. When it comes down, yeah, go ahead. But I think they're taking that too earnestly. And so they're going, oh, it's it's a thousand dollar card from this set. It's just going to keep going up. I need to pick it up now instead of stopping thinking, well, there's a lot of this sealed product out there. A lot of this demand is a lot of hype. Maybe you should wait a little bit. The only things I do agree with on people purchasing at high prices is rarity. Rarity is the one thing that's going to save your value in this hobby. A perfect example would be the Rainbow Rare Charizard. I traded it for a gold. Uh, which which Rainbow Rare Charizard? Uh, oh yeah, VMAX. Burning Shuttles. Yeah. Oh VMAX, got it. Okay. Yeah, uh, we only time I ever pulled or she pulled the big hit card immediately graded it, got rid of it. We traded for a uh, Neo Discovery Unlimited Espeon and yeah. Umbreon, Umbreon, and a uh, Gold Star Jolteon. Star Jolteon. Yeah, I saw. Mm -hmm. So those were clearly more rare than the gold than the Rainbow Rare Charizard, and those have mm -hmm. retained their value as opposed to the Rainbow Rare Charizard. Mm -hmm. And another example, this one's much bigger. I saw someone who traded a PSA 10 Charizard Unlimited from Base Set back when the hype was going for a Mario Pikachu 10. That was the smartest move I've seen someone pull off because Mario Pikachu hasn't dipped a penny. That Charizard, though, it went crashing. It did. Oh, it certainly did. And wow. So mm -hmm. I understand if some people are making some really big purchases on Rarity, kind of like, to an extent, I would almost say my purchase on the Generations, I maybe could have waited, but my rationale was pretty much the same right there. I don't, I don't think you should have waited. I thought that was a perfect, perfect move, especially with the 25th uh, anniversary coming up. Um, I got uh, the background. Every time I stream, I get at least two messages or maybe more. Are you selling? Um, no, I, I thought that was a perfect move. I mean, congratulations on that. That is a huge purchase. Sarah, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, please. Don't be shy, Sarah. When you're in that panel with all the collectors, don't be shy. <laughs> um, so my thoughts on the... On essentially collectors hurting themselves by paying these high margins, do you think? Do you agree, or maybe you t have a slightly different take? Um, yeah, I guess I'd agree with that. I mean, they're really only just spending more money than they have the time in some cases. Um, I honestly think if the ship sailed, don't try to jump on. You're just going to fall in the water. Just <laughs> that's a great, well, that's a great analogy. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's all just the patience game, you know? Yeah, you want to buy it, and yeah, you feel that kind of like, I'm not going to get the chance on some cases, uh, but I think just waiting for a different opportunity is good because then you can pour more money into whatever account or savings you have for it, and then maybe down the line you can make a bigger purchase for something that is more readily available. You're not overpaying for whatever it is you buy that time. So I yeah. kind of... That's actually what happened here by accident. We were yeah. saving, um, mm -hmm. we were saving, expecting a Mario Pikachu esque release, something big. Right now, mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. dropped. We had all the money mm -hmm. around. We this opportunity, mm -hmm. up, we went for it. Yeah, gotcha. I actually have a sealed Mario Pikachu box. I don't know. If you, it's up there. I got it for sixty five dollars. You guys, back then, sixty five dollars. So. Um, 
I got it on Facebook. Uh, Mark, no, no, Facebook Verbank. I love that place. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've I've heard I've heard so much. This is uh, this is a lot of things boxes. I've I kind of knew about this back then, and I always preached the same thing. Always preach the same thing because I noticed this way back then, where the cards were always it seems to be dipping but the seal box is kind of maintained if not go a little bit higher i've always noticed that and it was so good to hear gary just reiterate the things that i've said and i i love it because it just came from experience and not to be uh, you know not to just sit there and just admire myself i mean definitely i've opened things and i'm pretty excited but what I am noticing right now, and I want to talk about the steel market real quick, is that, okay, so all of these, it went up in price. And I do believe, of course, it's the fact that people didn't see that coming. And there was articles in like 2015 where people are saying the Pokemon market's going to die. And you can search those articles. It's not going to come back. It's dying. The collecting is gone. So people don't did not see this coming. And I will admit, I did not see this coming at all. But now that people see that it could be investable, and it definitely is, and you know, it depends on how you invest. What do you think? And let's talk about this because I have my own thoughts as well. What do you think? Because if you go to like Facebook groups, there's people storing boxes and boxes of seal collecting, vivid voltage, hidden fate in their storage, in their closet, close it, forget it, and they're going to reopen it in 20 years. Don't get me wrong. I have a bunch of it as well. And I know a lot of people that have, and they're coming out with new investors. And go them, by the way. Go them. If you you don't have, if you have the strength not to open, go you, by the way. So I, I don't know if with the seal product all the seal product that's not open right now that's still there i don't know if it's gonna have the same value of what it has now hopefully uh, i came across my point if you understand what i'm saying what are your thoughts on that well the number one thing i i constantly have to explain to people is none of any set that comes out now is not going to have the same growth rate of the generation that came before it. Sword and Shield is not going to grow as fast as Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon isn't going to grow as fast as X and Y. It's just how it goes. It's uh, it's um, just the way it goes because supply supply runs increase. I think Sword and Shield we're going to see one of the probably slowest burns. Like it's going to take a really long time for it to come out because supply is massive. We've now reached a point where you're right. A lot of investors have realized this is legit. If it explodes, I can make a lot of money. And if we've now exploded twice, what's the odd of it happening a third time? So maybe we should go ahead with that. But I also think people are overestimating the willpower of the average person. Everyone keeps saying, I'm going to lock it up for 20 years. I'm going to lock it up for 20 years. But people can't comprehend 20 years. In 20 years, I'm going to be in my 40s. In 20 years, some people are going to be in their 50s, 60s. They don't fully understand that. And so what's going to happen is uh, essentially what keep happens with most products, especially the ones that are for lower income people, essentially, if you don't have a lot of disposable income, this is going to happen much faster. Because you're going to be investing in these products. It's going to go up a little bit and then immediately go stagnant once a wave of people come out. The cardboard hands come out, they start selling, goes up again, and it keeps staircasing. But once you get into those high-value products, for example, generations, people don't have $500 to throw around. They don't have $100 and all this stuff to throw around. So it's going to grow much more steadily. And for for modern, it's, it's just going to be a weird situation. A lot of investors and a lot of people who are just going to keep trying to sell off and driving those prices down. So I don't actually know. That was just me really giving you my full thought process because I've thought about this too. Yeah, I, I, I think about this as well. 
um, which is one of the reason why I decided to stop uh, investing or just buying seal products to store for a long time. But uh, let's hear Sarah. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, I don't know, really. I don't think anyone can really predict how sealed product is going to raise or or not raise in value. Um, I honestly think that if you buy it at the lowest price you can and you manage to lock it in a closet for 20 years and, you know, forget about it until 20 years pass and find it magically and it's not damaged, you could potentially have a solid investment right there. But the problem is people aren't, not a lot of people are capable of just doing that unless you're really forgetful. I did want to say, add one more thing. That re rationale right there of uh, um, all these new people investing, the supply runs increasing. That's why I, I've been telling people run to vintage, run into the vintage. The people who have low disposable income, the people, the Timmies are not going to be in vintage most of the time. The further back we go, the more you have to spend, the more the herd gets cleared out, the more the more steady it's going to be. So if you have money you really want to invest, go start looking into the niche area. Start, go start looking into unnumbered promos, into Japanese promos, into uh, Japanese specialty sets even. Like I started picking up a CP2, I believe. One of them. And like those are sets that have been very consistent. So if you want to keep investing because you think there's opportunity, look in those. There's 100% opportunity in vintage and especially pseudo vintage because no one for, that I know has really mapped it out. Yeah, I agree. That's exactly what I said. I Right now, I'm collecting. Um, I stop with seal products, uh, obviously, because I'm doing rip and ship because I just kind of stopped. Before, I would never open, just buy it. And just store it in a closet. But right now, what I'm focusing on, because a lot of people ask me, what you, you said that you're still collecting. What are you still collecting? Limited Pikachu promos. That's what it is. Limited. That's it. That's that's where I'm focusing on. Modern and I made and I people thought I was joking when they asked me, um, what do you think of battle style or chilling? Is it chilling rain? I was like, yeah. to be honest with you. I'm still on vivid voltage. <laughs> I'm still on vivid voltage. I still have not that. I still haven't got the fat Pikachu whatsoever. I don't even have a sealed vivid uh, vivid vivid voltage booster box up there yet. So, um, I mean, I'm waiting. I'm definitely playing the waiting game. But I always tell people, yeah, I, obviously, I can. I can invest in sand and probably still make money, but the fact is how that how I basically invest and exactly what Sarah said. There's people out there you don't know, and especially what you said, we don't know. We gotta minimize the risk of it because there's. I don't like to call them Timmy's because my cousin's name is Timmy. But <laughs> he goes, "That's my name." I don't get it. But a lot of new collectors, a lot of people that come in that doesn't are misguided. That's exactly why I say they're misguided. They come in and they're paying two hundred eighty dollars for a booster box and just to keep it sealed in the closet to buy a case. It's two eighty times six. I actually have uh, my friend or someone now we consider great friends. He reached out to me. He said, "This is what I did," and I told him the truth. I said that was a terrible move. Terrible one. There's so many risks. One, reprint. Two, a lot of people are doing it. A lot of people are doing what you are doing now. So you need to know you got to minimize all that risk. Let's just say if things did not work out on your end, and so far it hasn't because I saw a vivid, vivid uh, voltage booster box two days ago for 170 He paid for 280 a box. So he lost money right there so we need to minimize all that risk you can still invest in modern just how do you do so and of course don't open it uh, but i do think that eventually there's so many seal products right now that are sitting and people are just sitting there because they do think it's investable i do think it's probably most likely not gonna be valuable as 
consider right now as compared to viv- uh, vintage right now. I'm not saying that's not going to rise. It, I certainly do think it is. I just don't think that it's going to rise as fast as what considers considered vintage now. So that's just my own opinion. One, so, yeah. thing, that, one thing I did notice, notice is uh, Sword and Shield base, how fast that rose. And mm-hmm. I, that one actually didn't surprise me all that much when I really looked at it. I I was so sad. I was going to buy a case of Sword and Shield base because it hadn't moved yet. Same mm-hmm. thing with Sun and Moon base. I was so sad on those. Right now, it's just finding the sleeper sets. Find what yeah. people aren't paying attention to. Like Ancient Origins. I bought two of those booster boxes way back in March because I realized, why are people treating this set so badly? It was fantastic whenever I I I, yeah, I, I, you re- I remember you asking me. And I remember because I, I remember when that set came out. It was not popular, not popular whatsoever. I had, I have no idea what happened. No idea what happened. I, I don't know what happened, why it got so, so darn popular. But um, maybe because of the gold cards that came in with it, with the, but it got extremely, extremely popular. What I saw. And that, uh, that came out. Oh, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, so what oh. I was saying is I saw it had a, uh, what was it? Primal Groudon and Primal yeah. Kyogre, which were the two big, the two legendaries the that were rare. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. the make a couple Mega Rayquazas. So that immediately mm-hmm. told me we're focusing in on that region. This is like if you really like that region, I can see mm-hmm. this very easily going up. Not because Sarah is one of the one she wanted one to open for herself, and that just never happened. And I realized that. If when that generation eventually grows up and they see all of their legendaries in one set, that could very well be somewhere to park money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did not see that coming. I mean, I have... Uh, yeah, I only have one booster box up there. I think I bought two, but the other one was in the storage. I did not see that coming. Not at all. There's some set that I I could see because I, I remember I buying a lot of... Um, well, uh, plasma storm plasma freeze was so popular so i went in i, I got that flash fire when it first came out it was popular but not ancient origin you know what i really thought was popular but was not as much as i thought was breakthrough i thought it would because it's a mewtwo set i thought it would be more popular than it is now but it's not but ancient origin seems to be a little bit more popular but i'll double check on that um so it just shows you you never know what the trend will uh swerve at so i thought it was kind of funny at, at all um do you buy pwcc auctions at all or do you because um, I, well, I, I i don't i don't at all like i just i don't like auctions it's just not i honestly it's not worth my time i don't want to sit there and try to snipe auctions like others do it's i just don't like it but i did want to throw out one comment i've noticed about x and y uh, kind of mm-hmm. a little off topic and part of why I think these sets have been appreciating. The mm-hmm. X and Y graded populations are not as high as I thought they would be. When I really Because it was not popular. It mm-hmm. wasn't it was not that popular but, when it first came out, like at all. Like I wasn't even interested. Um I you know, because I collected because it was popular, but I remember during the XY um when the XY set came out, people were not hyped for it at all i think flash fire came a little bit where we're like okay you know there's a charizard there's a secret rare charizard and that's about it but it was not not hype whatsoever at all i think it might be because people who actually played pokemon kind of made fun Mm -hmm. of the mega evolution aspect a little bit because i definitely remember growing up hearing Mm -hmm. about x and y coming out and being like what's mega evolution did we turn into digimon all of a sudden they just evolve <laughs> the battle and then go back. What happened? So me and mm-hmm. my friends kind of made fun of it a bit. We didn't really like the X and Y era a lot. And so kind of back to what I was saying, uh, mm-hmm. that had a interesting effect because all those cards are in lower population. The graded cards themselves started appreciating more because as those booster boxes all became more expensive to open, the cards inside for mint version, the mint versions of those cards became harder and harder to acquire. So then the tens kept appreciating, causing the booster boxes to keep appreciating. So it was a really interesting yeah. thing to watch. Gotcha. 
um, people were hyped for Phantom Forces, XY Phantom Forces. So I remember XY Flashfire, Phantom Forces, and um, I think that's about it. I don't remember any other sets of people were very. Even the base XY base was not even that popular. I don't re I don't recall. All of a sudden it went up, but uh, yeah. Now that I think about it, not at all. Some, but I do. I'm pretty excited. I think the hype is slowly, tadly um, dying down for a little bit. I think that Battle Styles uh, came out actually today. So today, so I do have a case sitting there. I'm gonna do my live uh, rip and ship. You guys are what? Please, please join. I always love the company. So, are you guys opening bottle styles at all? Um, we might be picking up a case this weekend uh, from Rudy because I'm one of his patr patrons. So, we may be picking one up there if he sell. I have no clue what his price is going to be. I think the worst would be one hundred dollars, but um, he may be doing eighty-two dollars a box if he's following his magic prices like he normally does. Really, I would oh. like that. $82, I don't think so. That's distributor's pricing. 100 probably. Uh, no, probably, actually, probably. Uh, it's uh, Rudy sells at distributor prices because he charges you for oh, the really? Patreon. So his Pokemon boxes way back in the XY era, because we can see those prices, he sold about mm -hmm. $79.99 shipped. Like that was the Wow. Really? I'm definitely going to look into this. How do I sign up? Because my <laughs> distributor... Uh, charge me a little bit more so i'm definitely gonna look into that huh hmm. just gotta get lucky with the patreon i joined just to support him that was the reason and then i started buying mm -hmm. products and that's how i ended up in flesh and blood which uh, i try not to bring up because it really really upsets people <laughs> why tell me about this because um, Jessica was telling me about Fresh and Blood, and she think it's a great investment. And she said that um, they were looking at some trends. And they were comparing it with another trading card. Is it Pokemon? I can't recall. But she was saying that um, it has the same factors that might cause uh, uh, the, the same um, patterns of it being more i'm sorry the same patterns that being investable and the popularity so i know nothing about fresh and blood but i'm excited to talk to her about it real quick or do you guys are you guys investing in fresh and blood so uh i'm gonna have to limit myself because you i honestly have my faith in flesh and blood is absurd um it, it actually is flesh and blood is the perfect marriage of how a collectible should be treated and i am very bold like people can get upset with me i understand i honestly think flesh and blood is designed better than any other card game out there so what they did they came out and said on uh, our sets we will reprint them as much as we need to for our player base in the unlimited format they're Desired pricing for the boxes is about 90 to 100 dollars so cheaper than Pokemon booster boxes and one booster box They create them so that they can make about three to five decks a piece. So it's really mm -hmm. nice most of your really important cards are like Commons uncommons that cost you pennies um, You need your highest rarity cards for so the equivalent uh, rarity would be like rainbow rares um those are like a buck, two bucks, five bucks at worst a piece. Even uh, they have their own lottery cards, which you get like one in every seven booster boxes. Those are in unlimited or like 20 bucks. Like they're really cheap. Mm -hmm. But first edition, oh, that's where they got it. Perfect. They the added boxes. Yeah. They added cold foils, which are their own special variants of the cards. They're mm -hmm. It's weird to explain them. You have to see them in person. Person, they're clearly gold, but they look dark, and they add various cards that look like that. And those are only in the first edition, so it automatically created a desire to collect it. And they came out and said, like, first edition is the one and done. When first edition comes out, no more is coming out. But they will reprint unlimited as much as they want. So they drew a line in the sand, saying, collectors over here players over here 
players, we will oh, give you dirt cheap cards just like they want because the a, a card game lives and dies by its player base. And for the collectors, they gave them an investment vehicle. They basically, they, without acknowledging it because they're not legally allowed to acknowledge the secondary market value of their cards, they said, we care about your money and we respect it. So we're giving you this. Gotcha. I'm going to look at how much a Fresh and Blood a first edition booster box. Actually, do you know on the top of the head so I don't yes, have I to look? Yes, I do. Um, so this one's hard to explain. There's We've had four sets, so three sets so far. We've had Welcome to Wraith, which was the original set. You have an alpha printing. I believe there may be a beta, and then there's the first edition. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really fine difference. For alpha, I believe it's a $5,000 booster box. First edition, mm -hmm. I believe it's a 3000 Then you get to Arcane Rising, which was the set directly after that. Mm -hmm. I believe that one's $2,500 or 2000 somewhere in that vicinity. Mm -hmm. Then there's the Monarch Booster Box, or not Monarch, uh, Crucible of War, which is settling mm -hmm. at about $1,000 right now. And now Monarch is going to come out. And th they also added a, a little thing up. Uh, First edition booster boxes will always be more expensive because they're investable. And that, hmm. I'm just going a little off topic. They did that to re reward the, the stores. They pay the same amount of price, but they can charge more, and then they keep the extra profit. So that's like a re reward system for them. Gotcha. So you're saying that a first edition booster box is just, for some fresh and blood, it's only 1000 And the game's a year and a half old, I believe. It's actually also a pretty fun game to play. We actually have our own yeah. deck that we made and play a few times every once in a while. Hmm. A thousand is actually not that bad. I, I'm definitely going to look into it. I'm looking to Fortnite. Um, I bought some sports cards, believe it or not. <laughs> My roommate, his mouth dropped. Um, I, I thought it was great. I thought it was a little bit something fun. Uh, I've got some NTFs, got some sport cards. So I'm venturing out of uh, Pokemon. I really, really am. I'm just slowly, but still collecting, still collecting, but I'm venturing out. So, but I'm, but Fresh and Blood, I'm definitely going to talk to you more about that. Now that I, now that I see that, hmm, do you, are you investing in a first edition booster box? Um, I'm not buying yeah, I'm not buying the. Good Sarah, uh, Sarah. Yeah, she's trying to see the same crime because we did try earlier today. We we failed. We couldn't pick up a pre-release kit because it was it was a steal. Like One twelve for a first edition booster box and two promos. Um, back to what I uh, I'm not gonna buy the other three booster boxes just because right now it's too much money for me to be able to park anywhere. But I am 100% buying Monarch. The biggest concern everyone has is it's all investors, which. It looks like that, but I have found there's lots of players around, and I here's what I believe. So long as people are worried about the game and saying it's all investors, don't have faith in it, I'm going to keep buying. The moment people all have faith in the game and say, oh, my God, it's a bunch of money, I'm going to now become more, a little more nervous and stop buying as much. Whenever they gain confidence in it, I know, no, the market's stabilizing, opportunity's dying. Oh, gotcha. Hmm. This is something that I'm learning about fresh and blood. Yeah, hmm. like I'm going to pump I'm out excited. a video, I believe, tomorrow. I was hesitant uh -huh. because, oh, man, I can get really bad reception for my opinions see, on flesh and blood. See, that's the thing. Like, and I try to, uh, I'm glad you, you mentioned that. Because every time, and every time it's just an opinion, right? It's just an opinion how you should invest. And I preach about the same thing. And I don't know if you get, if you get the same reaction as I do. But every time I talk about just how I invest and how people should invest and just my opinion on just cards in general, Pokemon cards in general, um, I get the dislike button teams to go up. Every time we talk about it, because I, I'm starting to think that people don't like to hear that they're losing money and they go to my stream to be entertained. 
I mean, thank you. I'm, I'm glad they think that I'm entertaining. I tried. But I, I, I started to realize that people don't like to hear that they're losing money. Compared to what I do for a living, they pay me to get advice, right? They pay me, like, am I going to make money? And that's when I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> or, or yes, you know, it depends. So, but when I say it's a different when, when they pay me and I'd say, hey, I don't think you're going to make the money. That's a terrible investment. And compared to just going on YouTube and someone's like, this is the hype. Pokemon is it. And I'm just sitting there like, I, I think that's a pretty terrible idea. And I think people don't like to hear that. And I also get the reaction as like, if you don't agree with them or how someone does it, you're, you're sudden like a hater you're jealous of these people but i'm just saying that like i came it's not that it's coming from a very caring perspective because i absolutely love the hobbit i love pokemon but how do you do you get the same reaction as i do as well kind of uh so at least on the way the channel is right now i've noticed it's a very accepting community of lots of opinions, um, which I'm very happy about. People disagree with me. Um, others are very adamantly with me, but I've seen so far, whenever people argue, it's actually more of a discussion and it's great. I am, from the get-go, I have tried to be as transparent as I can. If you're an idiot, I'm gonna call you an idiot. And uh, you saw my video about, uh, I was calling out uh, some collectors. I think you saw it. It was, uh, I think, uh, so you want to I watch all your videos. Which one? <laughs> I saw all your, I watch all your videos. The one that came you up with a warning at the beginning. Oh, yeah. View, view, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Viewer discretion and advice, the honest truth. Oh, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> yeah, so, um, because of that, I've been able to kind of avoid getting as bad reception on things because I've, I don't lie. I, Again, if you're an idiot, I'm going to call you an idiot. Uh, but then I'll go, oh, okay, now that you know, let's teach you so you're, you're not a Timmy anymore. The whole point is you accept you're a Timmy and then change. And I think my channel successfully been managing to pull that off. At some point, it's mm -hmm. going to fail. And I've noticed uh, I don't get dislikes. I get people who just unsubscribe, <laughs> which is fine with me. I, if they're not, if that's how oh, they Oh, yeah, are. I get that too. I get that too. I, I get that too. Dislike and unsus and sub, but um, there's got to be. Yeah, I told you. I know what you mean. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, the great the cam the camera quality is great. Did you get a, a webcam? Oh uh, yes, yes, we bought a new one. Uh, I don't know what brand this is. It's 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 Logitech. The yeah, Logitech, Logitech, the Brio, the C920. Yes, I got that's what it is. I like it. It's, it's much better. But yeah, I get that a lot was just... I talked to Squeaks Gaming about this. And he goes... And I talked to Pokey Knowledge about it a little bit too. And he goes, as long as you're telling the truth, it doesn't matter what people think. You're telling the truth. And I, I, I agree with that in some aspect. But I think that I have to balance myself where people come to be entertained, not to be like, hey you're losing money and i don't think people want to hear that that's why i kind of i kind of adjust myself a little bit and i i phase my it, i with my wording i'm very very careful with that so and i really like your honest opinion you because your video is more this is it i'm gonna explain it my opinion my thoughts okay there you go um but I, I try not to do that. I mean, I, I try to be, um, it's, it's hard, right? It's hard. But in the end of the day, it's, it's all opinions to me. Uh, in the end of the day, it's all opinion. If you at come and you ask someone for advice, it's just the same thing as this is what their thoughts are. This is what it is. So, but Anyways, I'm <laughs> just going on a little bit of a tangent on there, but that's just my reaction. But it still does not stop me from saying what I think we'll say. Um, so, and I definitely, you definitely have a lot of followers that agree with you as well. 
So. Yeah, I, I try not to change. I'm doing my best not to change that, even when I'm a little worried about the backlash. Because, oh man, I was so worried about that video I told you about the viewer discretion is advised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I ran it through a bunch of people. Like, should I do this? I could get a lot of negative backlash for this. But then when my subscribers actually accepted it, they they told me um, I was wrong in some aspects. And then I made a follow up video. If you saw that, where I'm like, I was negligent of this point. Uh, mm -hmm. That showed me, all right, just keep this up. Keep doing this, and I'll build a, a, a subscriber base that will be incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I always tell people at the end of the day, like I said, it's all opinion, pure speculation. But, but, but there's some things that are very true. Uh, for example, and I always go, again, with opening packs. And there's things that I always tell people. There's things that you can see, and here I am with you know, what I do for a living. There are things that are very much objective that you can see. One, a lot of people are storing things right now to invest. You can see that because you can go on a Pokemon website or Facebook. You can see that people are storing things. And you can just make a quick, though, yet opinion about that. And as long as we, when we state our, our opinions, we have facts to back it up. And I noticed that you definitely do do that. You do because you use example uh, when you do do that. So that's really, really great. So what is next for the Bubba Squad? For the videos? What is next in general? Collecting videos? What is next? Uh, well, he's been trying to think of doing more of our Is It Worth It videos. Where we just kind of take one product and kind of break it down, evaluate it to its core basics and say, is it worth buying this and investing in that? Because it seems like people like those videos. So we're going to try to attempt to make more of those. Yeah. So what I have next up on the agenda, I'm going to evaluate ETBs just as a whole because mm -hmm. because uh, mm -hmm. I don't think it's worth it for me to break down every ETB. I'm going to mm -hmm. start doing spider systems over every set at milestones because mm -hmm. I realized that people like to have that and I get to archive it for my own information. Mm -hmm. So I could just go back, look at it, and cross-reference with steps that are happening right now. And eventually, mm -hmm. we have to make the pace system. Oh, yeah, the pace system. I don't want to finish that. Take the <laughs> pace system out. is the system to predict singles. That's some, that I promised at one point. I regret well, That's tough. Yeah. That's tough. That's definitely worth it. Fi I figured it out, uh, an idea that gives you at least something, but... Yeah. To actually sit down and do the work, you have to the, maybe take at least an hour for each step. So if you want to do one card really in-depth, probably is going to take you four or five hours. <laughs> I don't think people will definitely do that. That I, Yeah, I definitely don't think uh, people would do that. You know what? I actually wanted to bring this up. I'm glad that it popped back of my mind. Everyone is responding to this. I'm going to respond to it in a different video with, again, um, but it's going to be more in depth. But I want to talk about it with you. I want to have your thoughts and I want to have Sarah's thoughts. Have you seen the, uh, the video with Frosted Caribou and her reaction to what's going on with Pokemon World right now? Have you guys seen it? Yes, uh, I started seeing it. I think she caught me during like 15 minutes in, so she didn't quite get it all. I'm going to go first because I can formulate my thoughts faster. You can think about it later. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Initially, when I saw it, I, I was, I kind of viewed it as complaining, but I had, I watched it a couple times because I need, I want to get past my my initial emotional response because I need to fully understand from their perspective what are they seeing. In the end, yeah, she had a point. Uh, the hobby has become a lot of investors, but all she did was point fingers. She didn't, she didn't provide any form of solution. She didn't provide any form of consolation. All she did was create a hub where people are going to be angry. They're just going to fester their anger, and it's going to make the hobby more toxic as a whole. Right? Instead of going, okay, this is the issue. How do we come together to try and you know, make the hobby better? How do we work together? It's No, it's their fault. These are people are here. This is why Pokemon's getting ruined. All right, goodbye. That was it. That was it. And it just festered anger. And I could see it in the comments. Everyone was angry. Like, this did nothing. 
all you did was say, this is why you're angry. Give me views. And I, I know that's bold of me, but that's what I saw. And like that's why I ended up making the follow-up video to the other one, because I realized they need some consolation. Like, what is going to happen from this hobby? How do you navigate this? And like I in the video, I said, if it's that bad, leave for a little while. Come back. Like, don't worry. The hobby's still going to be here. And so. I just kind of agree with a lot of his points. Um, <laughs> I would have said the same thing. It didn't seem like she was making solutions. She was just pointing out what we all kind of felt and what we all kind of knew. And then that was it. I see where you guys are coming from. I, I kind of disagree a little bit. I think she it's very much implied what we have to do. Even though, even though she directly did not say, you should do this, you should do that. I think in the video she did imply for us what to do is to stop supporting. Even though she... Okay, it's kind of weird. Because she did kind of, to be honest opinion... Uh, there's more factors to me than just content creators. I get it. I get where she's coming from. I get that the people, and that's very true. What she said was absolutely true. The people that bring YouTube creators their most uh, views is basically people that enjoy Pokemon. Because I really like uh, Leonhardt. I, I love, and people might disagree with it, me i love unlisted leave and i've been following him for quite a while i love all his reaction video because that's me i think he generally cares about pokemon i love pokemon um but i do think what she did say is correct in some aspect if you don't want and i think this is all implied if you don't want if you really want the prices to drop stop supporting just don't stop you're right exactly what you said exit the hobby don't buy just don't give in to the hype uh, but at the same time she posted some videos that i firmly disagree with she put squeaks up there i i disagree with that completely you should support squeaks gaming i absolutely disagree with that he actually provides great content and he talks about prices and uh, the market crashes it's more of a different kind of type where there's no hype in that in what he did his video right he talks about the prices uh all the um he does the breakdown analytical breakdown so that's a little bit different there but you're i, I think in some aspect that you are correct because she doesn't really say what not to do but i think it is implied where we just don't support we just you're right exit the hobby just stop don't let it get to you and she she had someone in the video i think it's called the confusing word and i went back and watched her video and i thought it was spot on where she made a video she goes i'm getting class out and buying pokemon cards and check this out shining fates 15 dollars a pack in california california you guys the minimum wage is 13 dollars so you got to work more than an hour to open one pack of Pokemon. That is getting class out in some weird way. And that's when I really thought about it. I'm like, the people that are buying these packs are just shooting themselves in the foot. That's it. That's it. To work more than an hour to buy a pack of Pokemon for luxury. Wow. You Where, work too. Or 750. Your size is two, two hours. Oh my god. Um, and I was on medium wage at $7 back then. It was a lot of work to open. And here, I'm pretty sure the uh, food is less expensive than in California. I could buy... Uh, okay, I don't like KFC. I was about to throw up KFC. Who, what, do, what do I really like? Oh, I like alcohol. I'll just say it. I can buy like two cheap bottles of wine for fifteen dollars. Like, if my Pokemon cards to pull, a rare. I'm not even a rare. Just get nothing. I'm like, wow. You, it's kind of. It's true. People are getting class out, and I want to know your opinion. I do, and I firmly believe that Pokemon is going to do something about it. People say, oh, it's just a PR move. I'm like, no. Pokemon is pure business. They're going to do something about it. I do. I do. I do think they're going to print and print. 
your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, they're 100% gonna print, classed out, kind of, sort of. Um, you're get it's a temporary class out. They're gonna reprint everything into the ground, and honestly, I don't mind it at all. Everything? We have. You think you think everything? Not everything. Like I mean, uh, I mean, uh, where I, Sword and Shield is where the era I could really see them reprinting. T Sun and Moon seems less and less likely. The more I really break it down, uh, when I showed a. Uh, I forgot what it was. I think I showed off the rat system. Yeah, that's what it was. And I showed the priorities. It, more and more, I evaluate it. Sun and Moon seems like it doesn't matter. They're not going to print enough. For Sword and Shield, they're going to reprint Darkness of Blaze onward as much as they can. Sword and Shield base, I don't know, because that was a, actually a modestly slow seller. And Rebel Clash, which um, I have to try to stop calling it Rebel Trash, um, that one was also a really slow seller. Not hating. I agree. <laughs> um, the, yeah, the issue with it's just I called it Rebel Trash for so long. That's the name I know it by now. So, And it's funny to me. So kind of back to what I was saying. They're going to reprint a lot of sets from here on out. And the, it's, the hobby's going to become affordable. Who knows? You may even get a, uh, what was it, Roaring Skies-esque period where you get packs for dirt cheap. You might get $70 booster boxes. Not that that's a good thing for Source. But the opportunity may be coming because I pointed it out in the rats in one of my other videos. Sooner or later, there's going to be a bomb of a set. We're going to get a Steam Siege, a Crimson Invasion, a, a, a Lost Thunder, just a set like that. And then the supply is going to be massive and it's going to drop. And stores are going to be stuck with that product. They're going to try and liquidate it. There's going to be other sets like Battle Styles. It's a nice set. But honestly, if they reprint it a lot, I could see that dropping like a rock. There's going to be opportunity if they just wait when the printers all catch back up. And I just don't know when that'll be. And it gives me joy because that means I can go move into other areas. I can move into Sun and Moon and relatively low risk. Like there will be very low risk of a reprint because all of their resources are stuck elsewhere. Because that's why I came to my conclusion of even Hidden Fates is undervalued. And people called me crazy for that one. Yeah, I do think about um, a lot of reprints. Do you think Hidden Fates is undervalued? I think how what's going for a pack right now? Seventeen dollars? Do you 15, think it's undervalued? Fifteen? Fifteen, sixteen. For a pack of Hidden Fates? If you want an Elite Trainer box of Hidden Fates, it's gonna cost you about on the high end seven uh, hundred and seventy dollars right now. On the average end, one fifty, and I've been able to pick some up at about one thirty. I packed though a pack of Hidden Fates. For the it's fifty dollars. Uh, uh, oh, okay, got uh, it, got it. Sorry, I was mistaken. I thought you meant like a pack. I'm like, oh, I said a pack of fifty dollars. Oh my god! Yeah, no, it's, oh, uh, it went up. I find that it's it's just easier to buy sealed product. I don't like buying loose packs, so I go based off of the Elite Trainer box, the most valuable form of Elite of Hidden Fates because you get the sleeves, you get the promos, you get the dice. Like it has lots of value. Yeah. So if I can pick those up for 150, 170, when Shining Fates was running around at hundred dollars, you're telling me that the second fiddle, which is mm -hmm. like it has less than half of what Hidden Fates had in terms of full arts, mm -hmm. it's only Hidden Fates is only worth fifty percent more than that set when mm -hmm. Hidden Fates was coming up on a year and a half old. We're starting to mm -hmm. hit that. Um, I, it was. Uh, 18 to 24 months. That's a no. Was it that? I don't remember. I put in a time window when sets usually go out of rotation. We're that mm -hmm. close and it's that cheap whenever it's, everyone calls it the greatest modern set to ever exist. It is the greatest modern set is what they call it. Most people. Hidden Fates caused the was one of the core starters of the boom. Even before this whole pandemic started, Hidden Fates was already kind of difficult to find. Yeah, that's true. So Very true. The price it's at, uh, it's just a bunch of bunch of people who are going to Walmart, going to Target, buying it at the fifty dollars. Going, I'll take a triple prep, triple uh, triple my money right away. Like it's easy. Whereas, yeah. uh, there's going to be there should be plenty of people just holding it. There's yeah, so plenty. little risk. 
plenty. But actually, some a lot of people are still selling it. Where I got uh, when I go to um, a place called Frankenstein, people are still selling it. I think it was like 180, I think 180 or 200 or something like that. Um, surprisingly, the Shining Fates Elite Training Boxes were going for 150. So I thought that was crazy because I don't recall Hidden Fates booster boxes going up to 130 right so quickly, so darn quickly. Um, and I hear people saying, oh, Shining Fates is the new thing. I disagree. I really disagree. I think Hidden Fates most likely is going to hold its value. I really do. I think Shining Fates is just going to go downhill. What do you think on that? If they keep reprinting Shining Fates, I could see that. Um, oh, they I, will. Well, they will. Oh, they will. Depends on depends on the uh, the amount. Because if it ends up being a massive reprint, like Roaring Skies level, then yeah, it'll definitely be a it'll definitely be an issue uh, for it. Uh huh. But it's a shiny vault set. People tend to like shiny vault set. It's I don't think it'll drop below MSRP. I think mm -hmm. it'll hold a very nice solid price. Mm -hmm. Um, at least certain forms of it. Mm -hmm. But it's if you're buying at the ninety dollar mark, even eighty dollar mark, I think that's too high. I think seventy or sixty is closer to where it might settle. If um, uh, I always go based off of ETBs. Remember that I don't ever talk about loose packs because I just think mm -hmm. terrible. Yeah, Shining Fates has been proven to be able to be weighed. So, gotcha, gotcha. All right, we're almost an hour and a half mark. Um, if you have anything else, I'm gonna probably call it another 15 more minutes because I got work tomorrow, and I always enjoy talking to you guys and just seeing you guys evolve in the this hobby. Um, I when I met you guys. I thought it was the most funny story. I would never tell how I met them. And I said in the stream, but I'm really, really glad that you guys are on a much better path right now. And that $3,000 purchase definitely proved it. Definitely. Definitely. And Sarah, just to let you know, you are an amazing girlfriend. I And I want more present of Sarah. And the first comment, every time there's Sarah, I don't know, I always comment, Sarah, help. Hell yeah! That's exactly what I comment. Sarah! Another one I went comment. New camera! But um, I love it. I want you to accept my invite when I uh, do... Uh, basically, Gary is going to moderate. Uh, Jessica is going to help me set it up. Actually, I hope Jessica do the host because she is her idea. She gets credit for it. But we're inviting all female collectors. And I'm so excited just to have you and I want you to be more in the videos please please talk you got the present um you guys definitely have the knowledge and for a year into the hobby you guys have learned so much and grown so much at all so um I want you guys to stay on because I do have a couple of questions to ask you in privately but that will be on for off screen this is just more of a couple of a friendship question so okay and uh i mm -hmm. uh, I'm, i am definitely working on getting sarah on screen more often she's just a little yeah. nervous so for now we're working together once she gets better i'll we'll like we'll take the training wheels off yeah. i've always been much better with it in front of <laughs> um, sarah's called bubba squad mm -hmm. two <laughs> we gotta and, get me the cameraman so what do you mean? You're doing great here. <laughs> this all oh, that's an excuse. That is just an excuse. No way. I don't let her fall for that, Sam. You guys yeah. don't need a cameraman. Okay. I saw that I saw that video. Okay. You were talking. You were out there. I I that's the reason why I kind of wanted to do this broadcast just so it is because you guys were so nervous last time. You guys were. And I thought and I was like doing live Q and A's. You guys were nervous. I, I'll admit that. I will definitely admit that. But this is definitely training for you, you know, training to go on here. Um, I'm going to do, do some weekly things, talk about prices. But I'm really glad that you guys stayed as in collectors. I, um, I'm pretty excited for that. Make more videos. I think they're very education. Very. You, you know, it's really funny. Just something before, you know, we end the, the broadcast that... 
people start thinking, you know, it's funny because after doing this for quite a while and just, what's the opposite of a Timmy? <laughs> Tell me, because I don't, I don't follow Rudy that much. I mean, I know uh, the, I don't follow Rudy, but not the terms. What's the opposite of a Timmy? There's no real opposite of a Timmy. Um, you mean someone who's gotten way too confident? Yes. Yes. Way too confident. Uh, yeah, okay, no, no, no. Okay, that's bad. What is someone that, that is not a Timmy anymore? There you go. That's a better one. What is someone that's not a Timmy anymore? Uh, there's levels of Timmy. Like, there's levels of Timmy. That's oh what thing. It's just you when you get out of being a Timmy, you're just you're just not a Timmy. That's it. You're a functioning human. Now. You well, wait, Timmy. you just said there's level of Timmies. Hold on. I can clarify this to me because now I want to know. What tell me, tell me of level of Timmies. Now I'm now I'm yeah, interested. Sure. No, I'll, I'll go quickly through it. It it kind of shifts around because Rudy's the one who established it and um he's mm -hmm. the one I look up to when it comes to investment. So there's the Timmy, just basic Timmy, just he's, he makes plenty of mistakes. Then you start getting into uh, Captain Timmy. Captain Timmy now starts spending a little more money on things, uh, thinking it's, it's a good idea in concept until you actually execute it. Timmy, Timmy will just make kind of dumb moves, not really fully think them through. Captain mm -hmm. understands concepts, but doesn't understand real world practicality. Mm -hmm. And then the Emperor Timmy. All right, so Emperor Timmy has a lot of money to spend. Uh, is making some really good moves, but it doesn't quite know how to seal the deal at the end of the day. So he'll go, all right, fantastic investment right here. Now I'm going to pay mm -hmm. way too much for it because I didn't fully do my research on this. Mm -hmm. So there's just levels of Timmy, and it just kind of comes out. It's fine. And uh, gotcha. before, uh, tell me right before we end the stream, because I want to actually yeah. check a little Easter egg of uh, information yeah. for whoever made it this far. <laughs> what did you say? I'm sorry, you cut off. Oh, um, I said, uh, just uh, give me a little bit of a heads up right before we end the stream, because there's a little oh, bit yeah. of information I wanted to drop for whoever made oh, it. Oh, cool. Oh, that's great. And by the way, do share this on your uh, YouTube channel as well. So please do. Uh, mm -hmm. No. Okay. So just real quick. I am a Captain Timmy when it comes to sports card. I'll admit that right now. I am a Captain Timmy, but I'm, I'm definitely learning. I do have the capital. I am a Captain Timmy. And then, and um, but surprisingly, when I invested in NTFs, but I did it with two friends that are crazy. They're so educated on, in, in my opinion on this so i did it with a friend so i got lucky on that i'm see so far we're making money so far but um but that's i am captain timmy on that i thought it was really funny i did not know there was a level of timmy but i was go going back to what i was saying <clears throat> so i work today my voice is i'm losing my voice but what i was saying that after you hop off the timmy train I, that's i'll just say it like that that the when it comes to just collecting pokemon it's we have like a collective thinking the same people because i talked to so many so many right king gary can attest to this too now that i hear what he's thoughts and i will uh confirm but david uncle dave all these collectors they come in squeaks even said they go buy the singles keep it sealed when you eventually get that of how to invest it's just basically on the same boat of how to save money it's it's not it's that just shows that everything that I've been preaching, everything that you've been preaching, eventually when you get off that Timmy train, it's the same level concept. And that's where it's unity there. Um, there's not a lot of disagreement. And that's what I've noticed. So um, any final thoughts? And I'm ready to uh, hopefully end the stream soon. I'm losing my voice. Um, sir, go grab a thing. So this is just a little tip on Hidden Fates for anyone who actually made it this far. Hidden Hidden Fates, uh, yeah, it's getting reprinted and lots of things, but there is a little sleeper inside of the set and something I've been learning about. Specialty sets. You can find rarity within sets themselves, especially once you know what you're looking for. And once oh, I, I'm so jealous of that pin box. I, you sent it to me. I remember it on the score. I was I've got so a couple. jealous. I've got a couple of these. Um, so jealous. <laughs> so what 
what I was going to say is in modern, there's one thing I've realized that keeps getting uh, neglected, and that's this, not just the sealed product, but the contents of the sealed products. And a lot of them get overlooked and others get focused on way too much. I won't say it to it outrightly, but this right here, I've realized it has been very much a sleeper. For anyone who made it this far, for anyone who made it this far, this right here, it ain't going to get reprinted most likely. The resources are too high. It just makes no sense. When you can reprint tins, and that's the easiest way to get it out to market. When you can reprint ETBs and get one of your highest returns, it just makes no sense to reprint the pins. And the pins, I've realized, are a very interesting place to park money. Just do some investigating on them. You might find what, I'm, what I've discovered about them. There's a ludicrous thing hiding in it that might make some money. So if you want to investigate, you think, tell me what you guys find. So that's all I'm going to say because uh, whoever made it this far, if you can figure that what I'm talking about out, you deserve whatever money can come out of it. <laughs> uh, you, you muted yourself. I said you have to brag about that, oh, sad. And by the way, I wore this hat for you, Sarah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, we want more Sarah, okay? Okay, we want more Sarah. Well, you, I totally agree with that. I, I, I missed my shot on that completely. I totally agree with that. I wish I had that. Uh, that's probably the only thing that I don't have sealed in uh, Hidden Fates, but um, I do have a case of Hidden Fates ETB sealed, so I only have one. So, but that is something that I want. I remember we talked about it, and you posted on Discord. I'm like, keep it. I remember I said it to you. Keep it sealed. I remember. I, I'm pretty sure that was me that said it. Keep yeah, they it sent me sealed. four little pin pin boxes that were yeah. loose. I was sad, but you said, I said, you know what? I want to have fun. I never get to open him face. No, oh, I said, no, keep it sealed. Keep it sealed. There you go. All <laughs> right, you guys. Um, thank you for this. It's a small uh, podcast. I'm thinking of doing it bi-weekly. Uh, maybe you like. We can do a second one maybe in two weeks or so. Um, but I've been so busy. But all right, guys, it was nice seeing you. Thank Smart. you, San. Stay on, though. Stay on. All right, bye, guys, and the recording.